ऐसे चूरन बना के पेट में जो पथरी रहता ना वो साफ करने के लिए आयुर्वेदिक औषधि एकदम रेली पत्थर रहता है पेट के अंदर स्टोन ऑपरेशन करना पड़ता है उसको इसमें मिला के पानी में खाने का सुबह और शाम सवा महीने के अंदर ठीक हो जाओ बिगर ऑपरेशन आयुर्वेदिक के भरोसा भी होना मांगता विश्वास भी होना मांगता This is an introduction to the exhibition, this space. It's both an introduction to the, the backdrop of the civilization that medicine, health and healing emerged from, and also a general orientation to the show. One of the ways I could have divided this show up is according to different knowledge systems, codified knowledge systems of medicine in India. Ayurveda, Yunani, biomedicine, or as it's called in India, allopathy. Um, but the way I decided to do this in the end, actually, was to group biomedicine, Ayurveda and Yunani together as analytical approaches to health and healing, which contrast with the other great way of looking at health and healing in India, which is where spiritual belief predominates. The work behind us is by uh, a Punjabi artist, his name is Sivart, and it shows a healer of Ayed who was revered in the artist's home village in Punjab, revered by villagers both for his connection with the natural world and the supernatural world. And in many people's imaginations, the two sometimes blend. One of the key ways in which people relate to healers in, in India is whether or not they trust them. There's a word that comes up again and again when people talk about their healing experiences and it relates to the relationship that they have with any individual healer, whether that's a biomedical physician or a faith healer. And the word that comes up again and again is the word vishwas, which is a Hindi word which means both trust and confidence. Health commerce and health issues loom large on India's streets. There's a vast street economy where you get people offering treatment on the street. Bone setters are probably the most common form of street medicine in India. But you also get very expensive cosmetics and pharmaceuticals from Ayurvedic and Yunani traditions. These signs come from Dharavi, which is uh, Mumbai's largest slum, possibly India's largest slum. And uh, they're signs for a bone setter, probably the most common practitioners of street medicine in India. And it's related actually to wrestling. So historically, wrestlers treated each other for dislocations and sprains. And then they used that knowledge with other communities that's where bone setters come from. That's the origin of, of bone setters in India. Very often in northern India, the Hindi word for a wrestler is a pelvan. And pelvan is used, is very often adopted as a surname by, by bone setters in, in, in northern India. Varanam. आजाद है और हमारा यही पीढ़ी से काम चल रहा है हमारे पिताजी भी करते थे और हम लोग भी वो काम धंधे के यही काम करते हैं कस्टमर आते हैं उन्हें फायदा होता है ऊपर वाला फायदा करता है वो आते हैं काम होता है हां स्कूल से नहीं सीखा जब बाप करते थे तो वही जो घर में काम होता वो सीख जाते हैं चाहे जो को चाहे जैसा काम हो दर्द कहीं का हो या हड्डी खसक गई हो या टूट गई हो कैसे वो सब होता है काम पहले मालिश करते हैं देखते हैं क्या कहां कौन सी नस गड़बड़ है मतलब किस नस में दर्द है उस हिसाब से करना पड़ता है मालिश करते हैं फिर दवा लगाते हैं फिर पट्टी बांधते हैं 
और पट्टी तीसरे दिन चौथे दिन खोली जाती है उसे आराम मिलता है हड्डी को तीन महीने लगते हैं जुड़ने में जो काम जो इंसान जो चीज़ का करता है उसको सब पता हो जाता है करते करते वैसे जब हमारा हाथ चलता है बदन पे तो वो सब पता चल जाता है कहाँ तकलीफ़ है कहाँ गांठ है कहाँ क्या चीज़ है वो सब पता चल जाता है जैसे किसी की हड्डी फिक्चर हो गई वो कहता है फिक्चर नहीं होगी चोट वोट नहीं लगी है तो उसका एक्सरा कराते हैं तब पता चलता है कि फिक्चर है कि क्रेक है क्या है क्या नहीं है अच्छे हैं सब रखे हैं तो हम ले जाते हैं तब हम रखते रहते हैं Places specifically equipped to treat the sick have existed in India since antiquity and some of the oldest medical manuscripts in the world come from India. There's a vast body of literature relating to medicine in India. But what's interesting about them is that they're very often, in fact always, devoid of illustration. When you get medical illustration in India, it tends to come in from sources outside India. And one of the, the threads of the show is to show the development of medical illustration in India. It's a fascinating story of civilization's ideas blending with each other. Possibly the star exhibit in Thabiyat is this work, The Ayurvedic Man, which comes from the Wellcome Library in London. It's an absolutely unique piece. There is nothing like this anywhere else in the world. This is the only known historical illustration of the interior of the human body as understood in Ayurveda. It's an interesting work because very often when you get depictions of the body in India you have for illustration of chakras, the energy centers in the body, but you don't get very often depictions of the body as a biological organism, um, which is what this is. The anatomy that's shown uh, in, the, in the, the, the painting here isn't uh, accurate. This isn't what the inside of the human body looks like, but it is very definitely a biological approach to representing the body, which is unusual in India. Yunani medicine is one among the few most ancient system of medicine exist in today's era uh, with its classical lessons. It originate in Greece. Uh, the father of medicine to modern medicine is the same be known as Bukrat or Hippocrate who can we can trace you know Bukrat in uh, almost uh, 370 to 400 uh, BC. The concept of Yunani medicine is based on the concept of akhlat or humors we say you know body is composed of four type of humors and these humors you know contribute the health status of the person you know once there is something morbidity rises you know in uh, all these four humors uh, disease will be the result you know the physicians aim primarily to correct all these uh, humors balance and the patient uh, get benefit of it and land up into health Ayurveda has a very different approach to diseases and that is the strength of Ayurveda. It is always contemporary. Ayurveda is one of those traditional Asian systems which tries to correlate what I call it biosphere and cosmosphere. And when we talk about cosmosphere, I also talk about social sphere. Talking about my practice, I have a wide range of cases coming to me. Normally, it is believed that Ayurveda is good for the chronic conditions. But now, very interestingly, the situation is changing that it's very difficult to differentiate between chronic or lifestyle and acute conditions. If you really ask me, we are more into the lifestyle diseases. We treat infertility, we have arthritis, we have psychosomatic illnesses. Most of my medicines will be comprised of the herbal products, herbal teas, decoctions, liquids, portions, powders, tablets, which are now tablets and capsules are the new dosage forms. Thank you.
If we see the source of the drugs uh, in Unani medicine, so mostly it is based on indigenous uh, system of medicine. The herbs and the shrubs are the main source, you know, 95 to 98 percent uh, comes from the herbal source, you know. There are so many mineral sources as well, you know, pearls, emerald, diamonds. These are the medicine also used in Unani medicine. Unani medicine are more common among the you know uh, lower middle class and uh, middle class and poor class people. Patient comes to us, we see that ke whether the diet of the patient is at the normal site or not. If the diet is okay, then we see that there are certain regimes, you know, exercises, massage, you know, bloodlettings, cupping. Uh, we call it as hijama, you know, there are so many regimes. We see that ke we treat the patient first if the disease is treatable with the diet and the regimes. If the treatment occur at this stage, we stop here. If treatment not occurs at this stage, we move to pharmacotherapy as well. We can have ilaj with tadbir, ilaj with takziya that is dietotherapy and pharmacotherapy in combi therapy as well. Let me give you an example. You know, in, in, in Mumbai, we have this uh, rainy season. Exactly during that period, we find Hindus following certain traditions of fasting, Jains following particular schools of fasting, eight days fasting, they call it Athai, and Islamic coming, come, going with the Ramzan. It's very interesting to observe this, that these religions have built-in systems which are meant for health. And this is the relationship between, to me, systems like Asian medicine and Ayurveda and uh, Yunani medicine and Tibetan medicine. And there cannot be medicine without social dimension. And that is the strength of these systems and there is need to encourage these systems. I think the future of mankind will be better. We are struggling to create personalized healthcare. Personalized healthcare and not be without social dimension. This section of the exhibition is the shrine. India is dense with places dedicated to God, to deities, to holy people said to have power over illness. Making peace with deities associated with diseases or with danger reflects Indian realities. As historically common causes of death, the awesome potencies of, of smallpox and snakes have been both feared and worshipped. Amulets are objects that are believed to have divine or supernatural powers. They've taken many forms, from simple lockets to ornate jewellery uh, and even whole garments. Um, usually they're worn or carried as general protection from injury or harm, and they may also be prescribed for specific illnesses. One of the ambitions of the show is to bring objects in that relate to the city of Mumbai. These two objects, they're called chadars, and they're from Haji Ali, which is a major landmark in Mumbai. Um, every Mumbaiker will, will know this place. It's, uh, it's not a mosque, it's a shrine, it's a dargah. The idea is that um, you cover the, the shrine of the, of the saint and ask for, for healing. Um, either physical he healing or, or psychological healing. And it's interesting that um, the visitors to dargahs in, in India are not exclusively Muslim. You get lots of Hindu, Sikh, Christian visitors to, to, to dargahs as well.
India's traditional systems set medicine within a much broader view of health and the life cycle. Tabiat, the resilience of individual minds and bodies, begins at home. And central to medical health practice at home is what happens in the kitchen. Diet is paramount in any Indian understanding of health and healing. Diet is important, but so too is exercise, um, which has a contemplative aspect in, in India with yoga. Personal grooming is important, not just for appearance, but as the, the maintenance of, um, of, of duty. And uh, cleaning has a ritual importance as well as a purely hygienic aspect. Many of the objects in the exhibition are really very ordinary objects, um, but which have uh, an extraordinary dimension to them. And one of the ambitions of the show is to show how extraordinary, ordinary things can be. So this is a tongue scraper. This isn't something that's very valuable. I bought it for, for 20 rupees from uh, uh, a bazaar near the museum. And it has an amazing pedigree. This object, which is commonly used in India, for removing um, toxins from the tongue um, and promoting what Indians think of as digestive fire um, has been used in India for many thousands of years. This object is referred to, in fact, in uh, one of the key Sanskrit Ayurvedic texts, the Charaka Samhita, and uh, it's referred to and described in exactly the same terms as it's thought of today. This object, again, is a very ordinary object. I wanted to introduce some humour into the show. And this is something I bought mail order from San Francisco for a few dollars. And it shows a, a GI, a ma big macho GI, doing a, a yoga pose. Yoga, of course, in India is, has a, a vast metaphysical literature associated with it. It's about uh, spiritual liberation. It's about harnessing the body and mind to achieve uh, spiritual release from the cycle of uh, suffering and pain. Asanas, yoga poses, are these days seen purely as physical exercise, unrelated to the, the vast body of metaphysical literature that, they, that they've come from. Typically when people come in with particular problems, we just look at the person, of course as a whole, but we start off with wanting to get the person well. One of the most important things for all of us as human beings, I guess, is to actually develop faith in something. As soon as faith is there, the recovery is rapid. So when somebody is told that they have an incurable problem and they find, and this happens with God's grace again and again, if they find in six weeks they are off medication and the problem is practically gone, then they say, wow, this thing works. All the pills, all the operations that I were recommended don't work or didn't work. And now this does. So lots of things start changing. And then when they have a physical sense of well-being and then they attend class and then we start feeling oneness with the sun and doing the Surya Mantras and feeling them flow through our bodies and our practice, then the practice, I feel, can be correctly called yoga. Yoga is not about the asana. You can be a yogi anywhere that you are. I think we are all work in progress. If I felt and if I called myself a yogi, I'm not a yogi. I'm not. I am learning because and that's why I think whatever I've done in my life, I think yoga excites me because I can never encapsulate it. I have to work through it through lifetimes. I cannot. Being nice to somebody is yoga. Doing something nice for yourself or saying that I love myself is yoga. Yoga is not a downward facing dog. 
a downward facing dog is yoga when you have to stay there for two three minutes and your frontal lobe is telling you, you know what this is so uncomfortable i need to get out of it with healing when it comes to you from within that i'm going to do it i'm going to heal myself you reach those places and i do i believe and it's a very big word that i use but the universe i believe that everything kind of comes together healing starts at home and with a little luck if you have uh, i hope the kind of approach that we have healing also ends at home it's i would i would say in the rarest of cases that you really need to go outside your home for healing except going for a walk in the sun which is wonderful but it's amazing how much we have in our kitchen which cures us of a wide variety of problems whether it is hing or haldi or adrak so we have all this sort of stuff in our own homes and the irony and i keep finding that nature is full of these jokes these sort of ironies the irony is that the man who founded what today we call allopathic medicine allopathy the founder hippocrates said let food be your medicine and let your medicine be your food the same one <laughs> who suggested that now in allopathy so little is known about the healing power of everything in our kitchen and people keep going to chemists to pick up tablets and things for it it's okay but there is something much safer much more beautiful and present without having to leave your home Thank you.